So welcome to the podcast series, Real Talk. Real Talk is a discussion-based series engaging with real people about real issues that are prevalent or prevailing in our world. These real issues are causing believers in Yeshua to stop, reflect and, and consider how they are to tackle that. They will challenge our own stance as believers in Yeshua as to where we are. Where are we on the spectrum of love and mercy and justice as we seek to um, engage these people of our world? I want to welcome my panel to, the, to tonight's series. And I'd like to actually invite them all to um, tell you their name and where they're from. And then we're going to move into our um, discussion for this evening. So maybe we could start right at the top. Thank you. Hi, I'm Esther and I'm from Blythe. Hi, I'm Asher and I'm from Nottingham. Hi, I'm Roger and I'm from Nottingham. Hello, I'm Rose and I'm from London. And I'm Fiona, and I'm from Nottingham. Thank you. These are my lovely people who have volunteered to have this discussion with us this evening. So um, let's just go back to last week. We ended our discussions talking about a real issue, which was about dating and relationships and marriage. And um, I didn't know whether anybody wanted to reflect or make any mention of last week or any thoughts that kind of we think are still important to bring out in this week's session or if we don't have any comments I can certainly just conclude our session from last week and move into this week's. No okay no problem. So I, I suppose I did this summary in my, in my thinking when I was um, contemplating last week. I think um, we concluded that the church needs to um, encourage young people to be more open, um, to discuss their future with trusted people, um, trusted um, ministers, friends, parents. Um, mentors need to foster and encourage open dialogue with our young people, with our young adults, and maybe even have youth activities for this express purpose. And finally, I think mentors need to encourage individuals to go through the journey of dating course. All of these were created and have been created um, and they will give you a, give individuals good and a balanced view um, on this complex issue. So I trust that that's kind of summarized our session from last week. Um, but given that we were talking about um, marriage and dating and um, relationships. I think one of my one of the one of the big things in our world at the moment is the issue of um, relationships of same sex, gay relationships, um, female and female, and men and men. Um, and I think that has become such a big thing such a tolerant thing of our world that it really is affecting the church in a very real way because these things are one step away from stepping into our church into our circle into our worlds and we might face them at work we might face them in the street we we see it on a regular basis on our television screens but really, how do we feel about that? What is our um, initial thought? What is it that sort of goes through our minds? Are we, have we become um, so tolerant that we don't bat an eyelid? Um, or is there some, something in us that says, actually, there's something not quite right about this? So I'm just give you um, a little bit of a controversial sort of, um, thought or pattern that's come from um, the, the church world out there, as it were. Um, and let me ask the question, should, should um, gay marriage be allowed in the church? The Presbyterian Church USA supports it, whilst the Presbyterian Church in America, PCA, and others do not support it. 
Anglican Church over recent years has softened its stance towards gay marriage and gay priests, but this is still much, there is still much opposition. Some have called on the church to be more welcoming of LGBT individuals. And so I ask you, I ask you the panel to um, give me your thoughts. Should we, should, should marriage be allowed of same sex people? Is that okay? Um, and maybe just throw that out to you. Anyone venture a response? I don't want any yes or no responses. This, well, you can, but obviously explain your thoughts behind yes or no. Okay, for me, um, it's a firm no, simply because of the scripture in Leviticus um, 18, verse 22. And the whole of that chapter, Yahweh is outlining things that should not be done. Uh, he sees as evil in his eyes or unclean or not right. It's not according to his standard. And in Leviticus 18.22, it talks about a man should not lay with another man as a woman. So if that's Yahweh's statute on that, I don't think he's going to condone marriage. So if that's the case, if we are believers and followers of Yahweh and want to keep to his law or to his commandments, then we should be aligning ourselves with him and therefore not necessarily succumb to the pressures of the world or the trends of the world or what the world accepts, but it's what's right in Yahweh's eyes. And if we are a congregation of Yahweh, then that's, that's what we should adhere to. And I think the church is a wider, I don't want to say institution, but as a wider body should be adhering to what's in the word rather than what's in the world. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. Asha? Um, and I totally agree we do need to be adhering to what is in the word, <clears throat> but I do also think that we need to be um, more accepting of people who consider themselves to be part of the LGBTQ community. Um, we should have welcomed them, um, and that's what we need to be as well we need to be an open house to everybody loving embracing maybe not embracing all of their all of their lifestyle but embracing them as people just like we'd embrace anybody else from any other kind of um, background so i think that I, I totally agree with both of you but i think the difficulty is how do how do we separate the sin and the sinner or separate the thing that, that is being done um, because it could be seen as if we are becoming quite tolerant then. Um, and this, I'm giving um, a wide spectrum of thought with regards to this. Um, yes, indeed, Yeshua was a man who, who reached out to those on the margins, absolutely right. Um, so yeah, respond. Ashley, do you want to come back to that or is it Esther going to? No, if Ashley wants to respond to that, I, I can say what I want to say after. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? Because, I mean, being somebody who, who lived a gay lifestyle and somebody um, who still um, is same-sex attracted, I don't use I don't use gay as a as a as a title anymore. But I am same sex attracted attracted at some level, um, and it's about for me it's it's not about um, how you feel who you are. Um, it, each one of us has done something that we need. I, I came to a real breakthrough in my walk with Yeshua. I really struggled with it at first. So how can I be gay and come into the congregation of Yahweh? And, and, and there was a lot of judgments and a lot of scriptures thrown at me and, um, you know, you're an abomination, things like this. And, you, you know, you're going to hell just for the fact that you were same-sex attractive. Um, and I came to kind of like a revelation and reading, the, you know, in Revelation that um, to him who overcomes and each one of us is an overcomer. Each one of us has got something that we need to overcome. And um, we've all got a thorn in our side. And it's about seeing each other that way, you know, 
we're, we're all broken. We're all, you know, we've all got our own issues, we've all got our own thorn, and we've, all, we've got our own things that we need to overcome, and none of them is greater than the other. And um, we go in, if you go into the, the word abomination, if you go into the Hebrew of that word, in fact, it kind of means more like you go, you've gone after idols. And, and in fact, we go after idols outside, outside of the LGBTQ community. There's plenty of people got idols in their life and things that they need to overcome and need to set aside and lay down. So I think just seeing others just on the same level as yourself, we're all sinners saved by grace. Can I say what? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Asha. Um, where where I'm coming from is I totally agree with the Bible. But when you say how can you separate the two, I I, I think you can separate the two. I was going to say somewhat similar to Asha. You might have a couple who aren't married coming in your church. You relate okay to them. I mean, I know of an experience that a couple came to church, they weren't married, they were living together, but the Holy Spirit convicted them. Nobody actually said anything to them. It, the Holy Spirit can convict. I think one, one thing that really upsets me is, um, I don't agree with gay marriage I, um, because of the scripture, it's against Yahweh's word. One thing that I want to make clear, really, is because I just because I don't agree with gay marriage doesn't mean that I hate gay people because mm. I don't. And you know, you, people might think you do, but I don't. I know gay people. I work with gay people. I've got friends with gay people. Um, but like Asha says, we, we, by Yahweh's grace, we're here. Yeah, so I think you can separate the two. I think, like Asha said, it's like any you've got sin, people sin. It's just that some people's sins you can see. <laughs> Other sins are hidden. And the Holy Spirit can convict. So I think you do need to be open to people, no matter what their background. Show compassion, like Yeshua showed compassion. I think I think that uh, we've got to be careful in the church because um, in my last church, I got a friend who was gay, and uh, his marriage actually he got married, and uh, which broke up because the people in the church sort of ostracised him once they knew that he was gay, and this broke up his marriage and everything and. He moved from the church for a time, and it was really bad. So um, we've got to love the people, no matter what persuasion they are. It's like, as you said, you know, it's, we've all got sins, haven't we? And secret sins, which uh, people don't see. But as, as gay couples or what have you, you can see that, can't you? And it's like, oh. Oh, that's a bit of a no-no in the church. But uh, we've still got to love them and uh, encourage them. Yes, thank you very much. I would just say, um, but can we see their sin? Can we see their sin? Because the scripture says, man shall not lie with another man as with a woman, for this is an abomination. So that's the act. Not how you perceive them or how they are perceived by you, whether they be effeminate, um, even though some in some inter interpretations of the scriptures it mentions be ye not effeminate, in fact that's a mistranslation, um, and it's it's not applied properly to that particular scripture in that translation, which I think might be NIV. Um, so we can't look and somebody say they are gay and that therefore they are sin, <laughs> because that's not it. Because the sin is in the act. Yeah, the sin is in the act. And just building on what you were saying, Asha, because I do agree with the way we should treat people. And it, what you were saying just reminds me of what Yeshua said about the sawdust and the plank of wood. You know, how can we be cast and spurges on somebody else when we've got sin in our own lives and in our own hearts? And we definitely shouldn't be judging people on 
their sexuality you love we love the person first and I think damage has been done because I think the church is stigmatized now if you anybody thinks if they ask a Christian about homosexuality that we're going to bring up the word abomination because the word abomination was there it's just like it's made people feel terrible about themselves because that word was used and it's completely wrong now you've got that I think as believers for me if somebody um, who is not a part of the church asks me about homosexuality, it's very difficult because yes, I stand on the word of Yahweh, but you've got to be so diplomatic because they're waiting for you to trip up with the wrong words so they can call you homophobic and uh, which gets thrown about in the wrong way sometimes. If you disagree with um, the act of homosexuality because of what we believe in the Bible, we're automatically homophobic. And that's, that's, that's not right either because like you were saying, Esther, and as well, Ash, you know, we treat people the same regardless of the sin. I have terrible sins that you may or may not know about. I could be so judgmental or, or so critical of people. That's just, the, the sin is the same. It doesn't matter what it is, sin is sin. And I think sometimes some believers have lost track of that and think that some sin's worse and that's, and that's not the case. And I think we should accept the person first. We don't have to accept the sin. That we accept the person everybody's got a struggle so yeah if that didn't come across before that's what i'm saying now when i said um i don't support gay marriage but i support people so <laughs> that's all i wanted to add to that rose jump in my, my take on it is that it's important for us as a church to see the person first it's it's okay for everybody to jump. It's not okay, but it's it, it's like it's whatever for everybody to jump on this bandwagon of oh a gay marriage or a gay couple or a gay gay gay. And rather than us seeing the person as a person who needs our love, who needs to feel she was love, etc. 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 We get into a judgmental state and we start looking at them by the labels that's placed on them. Um, so I, I, I firmly believe, I firmly believe that people who have same sex feelings and tendencies is something that is nurtured from a child. A lot of stuff that we do, a lot of things that we, we do and sayings that we say and whatever, all of it starts from our childhood. And a lot of things that we do starts and it stems from our childhood. And I feel that it is important for us before we start judging and you know casting all kinds of aspersions or as whatever it is on people we try to get to know them first find out where they're coming from take the label off take off the label see them as a person see the gift that Yahweh has laid in them see the person that Yahweh has made them focusing on that and then when we I feel those are the important points when we can see that we can identify that and work with that then Yahweh will work out the rest he will work the rest and Yeshua said let him that is without sin cast the first stone let's not cast judgment on them bring them all in receive them show them love seek Yahweh for them work with them that's my take mm. I am 100% with you, but I think I think we're talking quite broadly here, and I think we're on all seem to be on the same page. But we, we bring people into our own church spaces, and there is this general concept of um, anti. We talk about love, we talk about love an awful lot, but it's whether the people feel that, whether the people can see that we love. Or do they firstly see judgment before they see love? And I think that's that seems to be the stumbling block within the church. And I'm not just talking about our church. I'm talking about the concept of church generally. People people say we love you, we want to welcome you, but don't bring any of your nonsense to the church door. Leave it at the door and come in. But it, it doesn't kind of work that way, you know. <laughs> Father, help us to be um to have a heart like Yeshua that that's the truth of the, the matter isn't it because if we have a heart like Yeshua we're not in the place of judgment we don't sit at that place um which tends to be there you know right now we're, we're talking about asking this question should 
um, marriages be held in church and I know we've talked around that but is that a categoric yes or is that a categoric no with regards to that question and you're talking about gay marriages here yes I am <clears throat> so no emphatically no <laughs> she was said um for this reason a man will leave his father and his mother and will cleave to his wife and um for me that's it's laid down there yeshua spoke it himself um that is the purpose of marriage a man and a woman okay welcome jasmine did you want to come in but, well all i was going to say is i don't believe that they should get married in church and really why would they want to be married in church if they know it's a biblical place why would you be bringing that and you know that the church doesn't agree with your way of living why would you want to come into church and get married i just don't understand that kind of thought process so okay oh roger please i think as a church we've got to make a bit of a stand as well don't we? you know that we don't marry people who are you know the same uh, persuasion you want to get married whereas I know the Methodists have uh, they had a vote on it I think it was a couple of years ago and they voted for it that they would marry uh, gay people but, uh, I'm sure as a congregation uh, we put that out that we don't agree with it in the first place I jumped in my car just about three weeks ago and that was the headlines that the Methodists had finally agreed that they would marry um, same sex um, people together in church and it had become acceptable. They weren't enforcing their ministry or their leaders to do that. They had a choice, but that they were actually moving down that route. So my concern or my, yeah, let's discuss this the church when Yeshua comes back he's coming back for one church he's coming back for one bride right so regardless of denominations here and there right at the end of the day he's coming back for a church that is united on what the word do we agree mm. um and and if and if there is some ambiguity um because here's here's the um the thought why um, same-sex relationships want to be married in church because they believe it is of Yahweh and they believe that because of the inferences of David and Jonathan as a relationship that was seemingly um, sanctioned by Yahweh and an acceptable way of, of um, expressing love to one another. They, they, the, the, the gay people who have getting married use certain contexts of certain stories from the scriptures that confirm why they should be married. Can, can I just say, is it that the scriptures confirm or is it that we've twisted it to confirm what we want to believe? Um, there's no way that I, I can agree with that about Jonathan and David David there's absolutely no way you know well, is um, that because we are is that because we are staunch people that was raised in the scriptures and know the scriptures and we're not listening to any other reason behind that because we are also have, quite fixed about what we believe are we not well yes but you can have a, a close bond with the same sex as yourself but it doesn't mean to say that you're um having a sexual relationship with that person and david was like jonathan's brother they were close they were tight and we've all heard this saying you, you know they're tight knit that's how i see jonathan and david i don't see them as lovers and and entering that kind of a relationship no way David was a man after his own heart. Yes, he did things wrong, but you know what? I don't believe it was of that persuasion. No. 
<laughs> and I, yes, please do. <laughs> can I just add Jasmine a little bit? Um, I was thinking, you know, is it because they were male why people want to, as some people, sorry, want to assume that because it seems so alien in our culture for males to be that close? Because look at Ruth and Naomi. Nobody said that they had an improper relationship. Oh, with this but, mother and but, daughter. But, but, but why? They do. Yeah, because we can relate to that. That's familiar to us in our culture. Um, so you think nothing of it. Um, but I, I think they were just close. I have close friends who I say, oh, I love you. I've been on in a hotel room before and shared a bed with a friend. There's nothing sexual about it. The two females, you can't turn around and say, oh, you're gay or you're a lesbian because you shared a bed with another female. We went on a trip, we're in a hotel. I didn't care. There were three of us in a room and we, one of us shared a bed. I don't think that's improper. It's just two friends... I don't know. Whatever. Don't judge me if anybody thinks anything to <laughs> Close to it. <laughs> but We're able to have platonic relationships. And I think the world or the sin in the world tries to sexualize everything. And uh, I think that might be one of those cases. But I don't think there was a sexual element there. I think if you know your friend, your dad's going to kill your friend and you're not going to look out for him. I would. Mm, <laughs> I don't think you're going to get killed. <laughs> I think, that, that I think you, you, you mentioned Ruth and Naomi, but that is the other couple in the scriptures that people use. Oh, is it really? It is for same-sex <laughs> marriage, because you know Ruth, Ruth and Naomi clave to one another, and and you know you can take you can take whatever you want from the scriptures and apply it to your situation to make it fit, um, because that. That is definitely that those two illustrations of the scriptures are what the same sex relationships use and it's scripturally quoted at weddings and it's quite acceptable because you see the other thing about David and Jonathan is you know the Bible tells us that he loved him like his own soul right so there's this real fixed relationship there's an emotional thing there's a sexual thing there's you know according to According to my research, one of the chaps that I was reading said, you know, the, the, the scriptures tell us that, that Jonathan took off his outer garments, his kingly robe, and he was naked. And David would have looked at him and was drawn to him sexually because he was naked. You know, there, there's all kinds of... Um, Can I just... Is, does, it, does the scripture say that? It does say that he took off his clothes, yes. Yeah, but it, it what clothes was it? Was it just his outer cloak? You know, we don't know. It's just assumptions people are making and they twist in it to, for their own good. I just, no, no, sorry. <laughs> it, um, it's, just, it's just a no. <laughs> Esther? You know, you're talking about, like, men being really good friends. Did you watch the football last night? They were hugging each other. They were kissing each other. They were whatever. They're just like the brotherhood. They're just, <laughs> you know, supporting one another. Yeah, you see that in blokes. Women, I think women are, are different. You get good friends, but men can really have a good friendship Go, you know, platonic. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to add the football. They, they were really supporting one another. There's no sexual in that. Supporting each other. And I think um, Fiona mentioned in our culture, because in our culture, I don't think men, even with the footballers hugging themselves and each other, um, I think men struggle with intimate relationships, intimacy with other men. Yet, and you go to other countries like the Middle East, and, and especially within the Arab culture, and they call each other, men will call their best friends Habibi, which means um, like darling, sweetheart. And, and they'll walk down the streets holding hands. But if anything other than that happened, it wouldn't go beyond that. It wouldn't. It just so wouldn't go beyond that. On the most part, obviously you get LGBTQ people in, in, uh, in the Middle East as well. But just generally, it's just more accepted for men to be more intimate, more you know, holding hands and, and close to each other than it is in our Western world. Rose? <laughs> I was about to say, as believers, it's important for us, again, not to judge, right? And because we see something, 
what you see isn't all was what what appears to be something isn't always or necessarily what it is and okay we might know or have an idea that people are in a same-sex relationship or whatever the case might be i don't believe we should judge them let yahweh be the judge of that he can he, he can do miracles he can do whatever and if yahweh so wishes he can do what he wants. So I feel it's our responsibility to love them, pray for them, encourage them and whatever, but don't judge them. So, okay. So, so tomorrow somebody walks in, they are married and they are same sex relationship. What do you, what, what should be our response to them? Not if, if, the, if they asked us, what, what should we say? Anybody want to venture in um, responding to that? Um, because at the end of the day, if people are searching and they come in already married, then we've got a question on our hands, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to go on those? <clears throat> well, I think it's a good question. And it's a million dollar question. And if the church has a teaching on it, or if we have um, some kind of guidelines on it, I suppose that's what we will abide by. But as individuals, you have your own mind, that's my belief, and we're all spirit-filled people, so we can learn to use wisdom, because they're married. What are you going to do? They are adults. What are you going to do? They can make their own minds up. It's not like they have a mental health issue and you're in a situation where you're going to be coaching them or counseling them in order to help them to start thinking differently. They have got their own minds. So if they come in, they're already married, they're in a relationship, who are we to turn our backs on them? And who are we to say, you're not welcome here? Yeshua said, bring them all in and mm. he will do what is to be done. And that's my feeling, which again, I keep going back to the judgment thing because it is just so easy for us to get so self-righteous and so whatever and start putting them into little pigeonholes and whatever. Yeshua said, bring them to me, bring all of them to me and I will do what I will do. That's my feeling. And if a, gay, if a gay couple should come into our group, I'd welcome them with open arms. And it's not for us to tell them, you can't do this. You can't. Let Yahweh do the judging. Let Yahweh do the convicting. Make sure that our lives are correct. And when we're trying to tell others what they should and shouldn't do, we are not cast out. And on the day of judgment, they're standing before the throne and issue saying, depart from me, I know you're not. Let's get our house in order first before we try to do others. I'm feeling the same amen to that. <laughs> Empty, devoid of love, no one to care, no one to share the loneliness, the despair. Then he came into my heart, into my home. He said he cared, he was my friend, love enduring till the end. What is this pain that knowing him has brought to the fore? The pain of life, I never asked to be born. No one understands, no one even cares about my life, the hopes, the fears, desperation stemming from pain and the forever never ending shame. How can you, being a man, love another, a, a man the same? They say there is a chance to be free by looking to the one they hung on a tree. I've looked that way and to no avail. What can I say? Does my sin prevail? Is there no escape besides death? Why not take a moment, try and understand? And how about even to take my hand and lead me on to pastures new? And maybe one day I'll do the same for you. It's been a while since I wrote this rhyme. A lot can happen with the passage of time. A healing hand, a loving touch, the master's hand availeth much, moulding and shaping, making anew, restoring me to the image of you.